What do you make of that tunnel? Search me, Mama. Well, how dare they burrow under our ground? Who's they? The Hawk brothers. Who else? Well, they own the mineral rights, Mama. We don't. Without mineral rights, a whole ridge section isn't worth a dime. Now, let's not start another damn family feud, shall we? There's something called willful trespass. I've got me an 1840 land pass. All right, Mama, so you bought yourself an antiquated quit claim for five dollars. What are you gonna do, Sue Hawk Brothers for five measly bucks? If you'd studied law in college, instead of wasting your time scribbling stories, you'd be able to go into court and make a million out of them. For once, your rich uncles have gotten too big for their britches, you see. They can't tread on me. Here they come. We better decide something. I don't think you can sleep her under the rug any longer, Scotty. Why, well, she'd snap at 10,000 just like that. Oh, for Sarah, 10,000, why, she'd smell blood and never let go. Give her a big hug, a thousand bucks, throw in a Merry Christmas and she'll jump at it. Let me handle them. Sarah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Scotty. Hardy, I hear you finished that big old novel shipped off New York. Now, you listen to your Uncle Scotty. When those profits start pouring in, you turn them over to me, and I'll see you triple your money, you hear? Set you up in one of my shopping center deals. Pyramid. That's the way to a fortune. No money, no more, and a cold bit of Sarah. Nothing but headaches. Miss Justice. Hart? Liam? Sit down, dear. So, reminds me that a bird dog told us that you, uh, Bought up an antique quick claim. You got it right here. We want to know what Hawk Brothers intends to do about it. I'll tell you. Since it's Christmas and I feel like Santa Claus, I've talked the fellas into giving you $1,000 for that little five buck piece of paper. So, how's for a big kiss for Santa Claus? He never changed, dear Scotty. You're always able to talk my husband out of anything. Including his share of Hawk Brothers. Now, 200 times your investment is not a bad profit, Miss Hawk. Hawk Brothers wouldn't give away a thousand bottle caps. Let alone a thousand dollars, unless they stood to make ten times that. Well, listen, Scotty, uh, we'll talk it over, all right? Yes, we'll talk it over. This is Hawk. Fly east tomorrow morning. Well, yes, sir. Yes, sir, I can. No, no, I, I never have been in New York, but don't you worry, I'll find a way, sir. Two o'clock, your office. Yes, sir, I'll, I'll be there. He likes my book. Mommy. He likes my book. <laughs>
Mr. Hawk to see Mr. Prince. One moment. Mr. Hawk is here to see you, Mr. Prince. Send him in. Last door on the left. Thank you. Uh, Miss Prince? Uh, the author of Arms for Oblivion. That's right. right. Yes, sir. Well, no oblivion for you, my young friend. Well, thank you. That's quite an explosion of talent, full of enormous energy. A real dinosaur of a book. I'd like to publish it, Hawk, if we can see eye to eye on the editing. Oh, the sure, revising. sure. That's no problem. And this <laughs> is the young lady who read your manuscript first. She insisted that my wife and I read it and urged us to grab it before a rival publisher could. Yeah. Miss Jean Green, Mr. Youngblood Hawk. Well, how do you do? If you approve, she'll be your copy editor and stylist. Oh, you're awful young, aren't you? Well, so are you. <laughs> She's old enough to be a Stanford graduate, magna cum laude with an A.M. in English. You'll be grateful to her one day. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... Listen, if you're going to be my literary godmama, I'm already, I'll tell you. Uh, sit down, Jean. Young blood. we're closing up early today to avoid the annual regrets brought on by the office Christmas party. Last year's ended up in one known pregnancy and two divorces. Now, long experience with artists has convinced me that the best way to minister to their soaring spirits is by discussing dough. That's why I asked you to fly here. Do you have an agent? Well, do I need one? Well, no need to give away 10% of your blood-stained earnings to an agent if you don't want to. This is our uh, standard contract for uh, new authors. All that's necessary is to fill in the amount of your advance. Say, uh, $500? Well, I'd like $5,000. Well, I'm sure you'd like $5,000. But suppose I advanced you $5,000 and the book didn't earn it back. It would be a freak of a first novel if it did. Well, no, the thing is, you see, I'm halfway through my second novel, Chain of Command, and, well, the words, they're just pouring out of me. They're pouring out, and I, it's my best work so far. I know that it's my best work. You see, I had to waste so much time driving those coal trucks all day so I could write all night. Well, if I gave you $500 a month for 10 months, would you stay here in New York and work with Gene editing your first book? Yes. The first of 10. Lord Almighty. Being paid for English prose. <laughs> you mean you never sold anything before? Nothing. I'll sign all three copies. One is for you. Have you a place to uh, stay and work? Oh, I'll need an attic. Find him an attic, Gene. She's your shepherdess from now on. Bring him to Fanny's eggnog party after he's settled. She'll want to show him off. So will I. Well, thank you. This will take us to Brooklyn Heights. My landlady has an attic she can't even give away, so don't you dare offer her more than $50, you hear? I live here to get away from the rat race so I can breathe deep, hear the foghorns, work on manuscripts. Besides, it reminds me of my home, San Francisco. I guess we're both outlanders, huh? There's the attic porch. Come on. I'll tell you, I rented this place to an artist once. He gave orgies. Oh. Hot water? That we've got. Yeah. I'll take it. And, uh, no orgies, ma'am, I promise. That'll be a month in advance. Sixty bucks. Uh, all right. Sixty bucks. It's all right, Mrs. Murphy. We'll leave the door open. A lady of questionable morals had my room before I moved in, so I got the third degree, too. 
You live alone? Mm-hmm. Don't you have a, a boyfriend or dates, things like that? Well, I'm between bows at the moment, so there's nothing that would interfere with anything. <laughs> Say, don't you want to take a look at your brave new world? Think you can lick it? You know, New York can be had if your talent's big enough. I think yours is. So does Mrs. Prince, or she wouldn't have invited you to the annual eggnog party. She only invites the famous or the about to be. It's, it's kind of like a command performance. Can I go like this? It's the only clothes I have. <laughs> sure. It's what they laughingly call informal. <laughs> Young Blood Hog. Welcome, welcome. What a fantastic name. What a fantastic book. Attention, attention, everyone. This is my discovery. This is Young Blood Hog. From today until you die, you're going to say, I was in Franny Prince's house when I met Young Blood Hog. How does a man as young as you know so much about life? I read your book and I was taller and cleaner. I was younger. I was sadder. I was happier. I how did you do this miracle? Oh, darling, uh, Judd wants to meet him. Will you do it? And then look into the library and see if everyone has a drink. Thank you, darling. Well, thank you. Well, at least it's economical to get an early reputation as a slow, isn't it? <laughs> Don't be silly. It's the right of genius to be nonconformist. I'm under strict orders from Fanny to introduce the most distinguished new writer in New York to our most distinguished critic, Quentin Judd, Young Blood Hawk. Well, how do you do, sir? Well, from Fanny's raves, I have quite a treat in store. Well, don't judge me by this one. I, I don't think it'll be quite up to your standards, sir. Uh, next one's going to be better. Oh, my standards aren't so high. All I want is a good story told in an unaffected way. You know, the day I started college, your critiques have been my Bible, sir. I, I, I don't know why people take critics so seriously. One good creator is worth all the critics who ever live. <laughs> May I borrow him for a moment? Excuse me. My best friend wants to meet you. She's a concert manager. Her husband is on Wall Street. Very rich. Rita Winters, meet young Bloodhog. And darling, protect him from the vulture. <laughs> Fanny tells me you work every night. Yes, ma'am, I do. Yes, ma'am, I do. <laughs> you must have something I lack and envy. Self-discipline. Is, uh, is Mr. Wenner here? No, he's in Connecticut with the children. We had our Christmas today because I'm leaving tomorrow for England to round up some Shakespearean actors for festival. Well, if I had a glass of champagne, I would toast you a Merry Christmas and a happy career. Well, I guess so. How do you like him, Frida? Oh. An innocent abroad. He's as good as Fanny say. I don't know. Anything can happen. He carries a high voltage, but uh, he can fizzle out after one book, like too many of them do nowadays. However, I'm gambling he'll pick up the marbles his first time out. I figure the market can use a real backwoods, savage-type genius about now. Savage? He doesn't know his own strength. He'll have to write very bad novels not to sell them with a name like Young Blood Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can have uh, two glasses of that champagne. I'm Ferdy Lax. Well, how do you do? I understand Jay gave you an astonishing contract for a new boy. <laughs> well, I never signed one before, so I wouldn't know. Your agent would, or your lawyer. Well, I don't have either one. You signed a contract without a lawyer or an agent? Well, Mr. Prince said it was standard. He's no crook. Hmm. But he looks out for himself, just as you should. What does the uh, movie rights clause provide? Well, a, a 50, 50 split, I think. That's standard, isn't it? Whiskey sour. Do you know what a petard is? 
Sure, I know. It's a small bomb. I don't think I'm pushy, but my business is solely representing Reuters. And I believe that you will awaken one morning to find that you have hoisted yourself on your own petard and may need my advice. Merry Christmas. Whoops. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. There you go, Ross. You're a wizard getting through that crush. Are you kidding? After one year of New York cafeterias, I could run the wrong way through a lynch mob without spilling a drop. I wish you'd steer a young blood hawk to our firm. We could use a bestseller. You think he'll make it? Hmm? I think Fanny was right about one thing. Well, I'll remember December 24th as the night we met a very gifted man. There sure is some. Sizing us up for a new book? No, no, no. It's just, uh, well, the whole world I know so little about. This one seems more like a stage setting than a home. Thanks a lot. I decorated it for Fanny. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I... Never, never apologize. But it suits Fanny because her, her house is a stage, and she's the star in it. Well, the fact is, you see, I'm in need of some research on period decoration from a new book. Where do you think I should start to look? Well, as good a place as any is uh, 935 Fifth Avenue. Is that a library? Yes, in my house. But if you'd care to take me home, I'll, I'll make you some coffee and turn you loose in the best decoration collection in town. I understand you are a night worker, aren't you? Yes, I do my best work then. <laughs> it occurs to me it isn't often these days we are invited to a running of the stag, eh, Frida? Oh, that's an ancient custom. You see, the stag had to be a prime young male, full of fight, worthy of the chase, to be harried to death by the rich hunters, each of whom had his private reasons for chasing the strong male thing to death. Oh, they, the, the ladies loved it, too. And after the hounds had chased him down, the gamekeeper would pull his head back and offer a sharp knife to the loveliest lady there, and she would cut his throat. And that, my friend, was the end of the stag. Well, didn't the stag ever outrun them all? Well, occasionally. But you won't. Not unless you go back to your hills in time, back where you belong. You're supposed to laugh at Quentin's jokes. It can make you or break you. Shall we exit laughing? Uh, Jean, Mrs. Uh, Miss Winner said I could use her library this evening for some research. I'd be delighted to take Jean home. Oh, thank you, Mr. Hunt. She's very charming. Who is she? Oh, that's Jeannie Green. She's my editor. This is the first time I ever saw Frida Winner go home on the arm of someone else besides her husband. Did you? What shall we have? A little bit or a lot? Well, I, I don't want to put you out, Miss Winter. Frida is my name. But why shall I call you anyway? Youngy or bloody? <laughs> well, my first name's Arthur. Huh. All right, Arthur. Shall we eat first? You don't mind eating in the pantry. We're all alone. No, no, I. I come from a long line of kitchen eaters. Ooh-wee! 
How many people does it take to run this place? Five. Five? <laughs> Holy mackerel. Angry? Uh, how about sausages? Scramble eggs? Yeah, I'll get the eggs here. How good are you at breaking eggs? Well, I don't know. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now watch this. Well, what goes with sausages and scrambled eggs? Champagne. Virginia, 80-70. That's your period. This is the one. No. Oh, there. Yeah. The Satterwhite House. That will answer your needs. Here. Skip our au revoir, friends. Well, there's nothing I'd rather do than stay with you. You know that. But I think it's better when we never meet each other again. Don't you? It was all my fault. I'm so sorry. Never, never apologize. It's practically the first thing I ever told you. I'll be across the ocean long enough for you to forget. For me. All ashore that's going ashore. All ashore that's going ashore. Merry Christmas, my love. Here is hoping the stag outruns the hounds. Am I fired? With your first changes, I got angry. The next one, just deeply annoyed. Then came the truth. How grateful I should be to you. By and large, you're dead right, Jeannie. But you keep a record, all your word changes and your cuts and your plot alterations. Now, that's important. Then every couple of days, we'll get together here, up in the attic, and we'll go over them together. I may not use all your suggestions, but I want them. Understood? Understood. Understood. Well, you know, it's one o'clock in the morning. I didn't even stop to wish you a Happy New Year. 
Well, I don't feel in the least abused. On the contrary, there's nothing I'd rather do than work with you. You know, the, what puzzles me is that a, a girl like you, still at large, thought you'd been speared at 16. Well, I'll offer the usual defense. I had lousy luck. Well, I want to thank you for everything. Happy New Year. You expecting anyone? No. Open up, Iris, baby. Come on, honey. Iris is Happy that professional year. lady I told you about. Every about twice a week, oh, some hey, drunk don't comes you bother. to Let me get, let me get rid of. Is there somebody? In... Sorry, friend. The lady doesn't live here anymore, so we better shut up and beat it. Who's a new broad? I said she doesn't live She's here. She's prettier than Iris. She doesn't live. Get out of my way! Hey, right, honey. Oh, what are you getting mad at me for? You're not... hey, what's the matter with you? You got a lousy sense of humor. God, you might have killed him. I don't like that kind of drunk. Listen, do me a favor, huh? Don't ever lose your temper at me. No. I won't. Not if you don't try and fix my book too much or cut too deep. <laughs> Can't cut an elephant down to a Siamese cantini. And I promise you this. Every novel we work on together be better than the last one. That's why it'll make it a happy new year. Lock your door here. Good morning, Pearl. Good morning, Jane. So happy to have you back home, Madame. Oh. The house seems dark without you. I think young Paul missed you most of all. Well, I've certainly missed you all. There's nobody more boring than actors. Except to other actors. Excuse me, I'm looking for young Blood Hawk. One flight up. Thank you. Come on in, Jeannie. You don't have to knock. Yeah, this new chapter here is. There's the chief. Who's Jean Arthur? Oh, uh, you remember? You met her at the Princess. She's, uh, she's my editor. She lives below me. Uh -huh. Well, it's just a convenience having her so close. That's all. <laughs> I dare say. Why didn't you inscribe her your first copy? Hmm? Is she in love with you? <laughs> no, it's not like it was with us. Too bad. She's so very attractive. Another book already? Chain of command is all I have done. You are a fast worker, aren't you? Uh. Rita. No, no, please. Not here. You do have to choose an attic. I don't think a creator should live like a hermit or a beggar.
May I speak to George Fedal, please? Hello, George? C'est Frida. J'ai absolument besoin de votre appartement pour un ami à moi. Vous le quittez maintenant? Parfait. Un écrivain. Tell me what we're doing here. Just mind your manners. You'll recognize this man the minute you see him. He's one of the greatest actors of our time. I manage him. It's all arranged. Oh, George. Welcome, thrice welcome. This is young Lord Hall. How do you do? How do you do? Yeah. Hello, Lord Hall. Imagine the slave driver. Saturday I closed after a two-year run with Irene Perry on Broadway. So, Frida books me to fly to Yugoslavia tonight to play Pontius Pilate. Huh. And they haven't even found the Christ yet. Well, you should care who plays Christ. You get 10% of the gross. Him, I'm not worried about, but Yugoslavia. <laughs> anyway, I'm honored that you will occupy my apartment while I'm gone. Imagine, Frida. A masterpiece by Young Blood of War, written at my desk. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I can't afford a place afford? like this. Afford? I'm forbidden to sublease, so there is nothing to pay. All I ask is a, a crack at any play you write. Oh, well, goodbye, my friends. My place is yours. No, wait a minute. Look, you can't. Now, if you want to welcome a lady caller on occasion when she threw at her work, you may do so. And you won't have to brush wet laundry aside in order to take her. Kiss her. Don't, don't get up, Ross. Where I work, a gentleman doesn't rise when a lady enters a room. It's a lost art. Gentleman and the prairie dog, a vanishing animal. The gents and prairie dog. <laughs> you know why I wanted to see you tonight? Mm -mm. To ask if you're happy at Prince House. Sounds like a talent raid. It is. I'd like to create a new author's department at our firm, with you heading it. 300 a week to start to see if you like us. We know we like you. We? Oui. The whole office likes me? The editorial we. Me. You'd be responsible to me directly. I promise a free hand. That's very flattering. But there's a but. Youngblood Hawk. He depends on me. We work well together, and I'd like to think I couldn't easily be replaced. Would that cancel the deal? Quite the contrary. As a matter of fact, I'd welcome a package deal. If you both came to Hodge out the way, you could go on as his editor. And then it boils down to what he wants, huh? Think on it, Jean. Well, whether it works out or not, you made me feel very good. I spend lots of evenings alone, Jean. Maybe we could have dinner together. Being with you makes me feel good. It's funny. Some people improve life by simply existing. Good night, Ross. Good night.
Morning, Jimmy. Well, how am I doing? I'll bite. How are you doing? <coughs> Thought you swore off those things. I did. <coughs> I have no character. Besides, I like to cough. What's it to you? Nothing. It's nothing to me. Nothing except it's going to take me quite a while to break in a new girl after they cart you out here in a bag. Look, would you mind if we didn't go over those changes today? Why'd you have a bad night? No, did you? Look, Jeannie, uh, you not only do my editing for me, you slave to keep this place clean, make my coffee. Listen, how'd you like to go to work at the top of Sutton Place, huh? How'd you like that? With a gorgeous view of the river. Room service any time we want, day or night. Midnight supper if we feel like it. Champagne, the whole works. Well, I suppose I could bear it. Why? Well, George Fidel's gonna let me use his apartment while he goes and makes a movie abroad. How on earth did you meet him? Well, uh, Frida Winner arranged it all. She doesn't think this place is fit for human habitation. Oh? It was until yesterday. You picked it yourself. You're doing some very fine work here, and you don't owe anybody anything. I won't owe anybody anything there. You'll owe her something. You didn't owe him. You think I was wrong in accepting? You're just annoyed with Mrs. Winner. Look, she's a happily married woman with three children. Oh. She's a toothless old hag, a patron of the arts. Suppose she's paying for that apartment. You'd think I'd be moving there if she was. Then you are moving there. Yes, I am today. Well, looks like it's moving day for all of us. I'm leaving Prince House. I'm going over to Hodge Hathaway to head a new author's department. When did you make that decision? Just now. Just now. Just now. You think Ross Hodge needs you more than I do, is that it? You don't need me. You never have. My emotions are becoming a little too obvious. I, I can't continue to work so closely with you. Certainly not night after night. Now, if you're in love with Ross Hodge, I can understand you putting into us. But if it's just a question of a better job for more money, I'll pay you the difference. My God, let me out of here. And listen, you stop smoking, you hear? You stop it, it's not good for you. Well, don't you go to that place, it's not good for you either. Having delivered himself of this mass of coal heavers prose, Mr. Youngblood Hawk, who can take a name like that seriously, unless perhaps he takes seriously the claims of his publisher, Mr. Hawk, as I say, will now perhaps return to his former and perhaps more suitable occupation of driving coal trucks. On the other hand, here is... Hello. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Prince, yes, I, I saw it. I committed $10,000 to that advertising campaign to get you off the ground. And there went my share of any future movie rights. And I told all my friends he'll be mortal. Obviously, I can lose my shirt on this book. Maybe the afternoon papers will be kinder. Stop dreaming. Darling, look at this. I'm going to bed. Young blood hawk throat. 